don't have his phone. Okay. Um, can I lend my? No, I don't. You don't? Only oh, no. We'll give you another two minutes. Uh, and then, um, my understanding was that both John and Norma yeah. were uh, the president. I didn't hear from them. I didn't hear from them. Are they the publishers? The commercial real estate. No, wait, see how many commercial and the real estate. I mean, I couldn't drop away.
if you if you want us to ask questions of Mr. Casanelli, let us know, um, either by writing it down on a piece of paper or letting us know and we can direct the question. And similarly, if you want us to direct questions to Mr. Clark, just uh, ask the questions through us. After you each have had a chance to address the board, we'll see if um, abutters or members of the general public uh, want to either add facts or add comment to the, uh, to the application. Uh, so with that, Mr. Barrington. Thank you. I'm going to begin with Mo Castanelli um, describing the use of uh, towing vehicles at this location, uh, to his knowledge. Tell us the history of having tow trucks there. <clears throat> okay, when I first purchased your name and uh, address. Uh, Mauro Castanelli, and I used 162 Somersworth Road in Rollinsburg. When I first purchased this property, I uh, owned a towing company, and the reason I purchased it was a place to park my tow trucks. And I came in and I spoke to Mr. Ed Jansen and Al Guyon, and they said it was okay to uh, use tow trucks there, because tow trucks are part of uh, like a junkyard, work hand in hand. So it's five acres of industrial zone land, and uh, I've been there 17 years, and I'm still there today. It's established. I've been helping people in this community for 22 years with AAA. I do Geico, Allstate, and all the other tow clubs. I tow for the police. I used to tow for Summersworth, but I still tow for Dover Police, Berwick Police call me, you know, all hours of the night. And we go and, you know, do accidents, arrests, and so forth. So the tow trucks are parked there. My tow truck drivers <coughs> take the trucks home with them. So it's not like they're in and out 24 hours a day. Uh, so whoever's on duty, like the third shift guy, takes the truck home with them for the evening. So if we do get a police call, we bring it to my yard and we store it there until the people come and claim it. And uh, I also buy junk cars. So when we buy a junk car, we tow it to the junk yard. Well, how many trucks have you had? Um, over 17 years, tow trucks. I usually have five to six registered at all time, and they're all registered to Rollinsburg. Every few years, I buy two new trucks, and you know, because by then they're worn out. And did you rely upon the representations of uh, Mr. Jensen and others in 17 years of continued use that this was a permissible use? Yes. Um, was it important in your purchase of the property to be able to have your tow trucks there? Yes, there's plenty of room to park the tow trucks. That's where I store them. I service them there in my garage. And did Mr. Day have tow trucks prior to you purchasing the property? Yes, when I bought the property, he had a tow truck that came with it. He had a front end loader, a bulldozer. Um, I was going to make comments, but are there questions directly from Mr. Castanelli based upon what he's talked to in terms of facts and history? Okay. <coughs> Mr. Boss, any questions for Mr. Castanelli? Not at this time. Sure. Um, so how many... In terms of the, um, and Brian, if you think that this is a question I should ask you, feel free to, to jump in instead. Um, on average, how many times per week does a cast tow truck enter or leave the business property? How many times per week? Right. Well, every day when they break ship, they'll jump in a truck and they'll go. All right, but are you saying that when a driver, a tow truck driver leaves the property, he leaves the property for the entire day and doesn't return until the so end of the ship. So we have to service the vehicle or if he brings the junk in. And so how many entries and exits by the truck trucks occur on a, per day or per week? Yeah, I can. I don't want to be guessing, so I don't know the exact amount of okay. times. Now, well, so you could say each truck once a day, or each truck one and a half times a day? Yeah, probably each truck, uh, I would say, three times a day. 
it's fair. I mean, if the truck's sitting there, then it's sitting there. But they'll come in, they'll go. Like today, he did a tow to um, 120 miles to Lyme, New Hampshire. So he was gone five hours. He took off, and then he came back and parked the truck. So the trucks you have, how many of them have a driver on any given day? I have uh, three drivers on during the day, and then two at night. Okay. Um, when you... So you, you bought Day's Auto Salvage in what year? 2001. 2001. And at that time, how many tow trucks did Day's Auto Salvage, how many tow trucks did they have were they operating? Mr. So Day had one and I had two. So we had three total. When, now, I first got there. when you say two, are you saying that your business was operating there in 2001? I had two gas towing trucks, yes. And then when I purchased that, Property, then I moved my trucks there. And so it went from one of Mr. Days and two of yours to how many today are there? Yeah, five. Five? Um, five are all operational? There? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so. One of them just sits there all the time. It's a record we barely use. It. Sure. So four of them are running a lot. Is, is cast towing a separate business from Days Auto Salvage or is it the same business now? Separate. What's that? It's separate. separate. Right now. Okay. Um, how many? You do a single tax return for both. Yes, one for both. Yeah. It's separate. How many uh, employees does Cast Towing have versus Days Auto Salvage? They're all the same employees. There were, and so, how of the of your employees and how many total employees do you have? Uh, right now, six. Six. Of the six total employees, how many are involved on a daily basis doing towing, and how much are involved on a daily basis doing the salvage <coughs> job? Yeah. I have one that does the salvage job, and he's my mechanic. He fixes my trucks. Okay. And the rest of them are in the tow trucks. Okay. And he also fixes your tow truck. Yeah. Yeah, he's my mechanic. So it's fair to say that, or is, is it fair to say that cast towing makes up the lion's share of the profits of the two businesses? Yes. Okay. I advertise on my business cards, cast towing, we buy junk cars. Okay, I have no further questions right now, but thank you. Can I ask questions? Um, I do have a couple of questions, um, Mr. Gassinelli. So can you just, I just want to clarify. Um, so when you purchased the business, Mr. Day had one tow truck. Yes. And then you acquired the business. He left with that one tow truck, and you brought two tow trucks onto the property. Yeah. So, so I mean, did three. you say you had, you were operating there before you actually bought the business? No. That, yeah, that's what I wanted clarification, because that was what was alluded to. So it was completely separate. You purchased it. And moved in there. And, okay, so it went from one tow truck to two large trucks. Um, are you aware, so when you purchased the, the junkyard, was the towing just in relation to junk cars? Was he also doing towing for AAA, Geico? No. No. It, it was just in relation to junk cars? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's all I have for right now. Um, I had just a couple of questions. Famous last words, um, Mr. Casanelli. There, if I'm understanding what you're saying, you're saying that there are no entrances and exits from the yard at night. If there is, it's very few. Okay. But uh, but the driver comes in at six o'clock. He takes the truck and goes. There's no reason to hang around there. It's closed. There's nothing going on. The only time they come back there is to bring the car in. Was in an accident for a police call or snow removal when they have the parking bands, then they're in and out, towing cars in or releasing a car if somebody wants to pick up their car after hours. Okay. Um, and I, it's always hard to I, <coughs> you know, estimate these things. Do you have an estimate of how many cars are in the yard at this point? Right now there's about 50 to 60 cars. 
and I'm sorry, I don't know more about how your business works, but um, <coughs> can you tell me a little bit about how the salvage business works? The yeah. car comes in and... Yeah, the car comes in, we buy, we, we buy it, advertise it for sale, if nobody buys it for parts or as a whole car, then uh, we bring it to Berwick Metal and we jump it. Okay. Um, and are, do you um, inventory parts there or no, sell parts? Whatever's on the car is the parts. Once the car's gone, then the parts are gone. Um, and there's also an auto repair business there or? No, we just repair our own vehicle. Okay. And the towing service is so that if a um, car is in an accident, it might come to your yard because it was towed there if it was totaled? Yeah. And it might come there if it was a snow day and a car was parked in a place where it's towing during snow days. Yeah. Um, or if a driver was um, stopped for DWI, they, they might have to take not be able to drive their car home, so that might come to the lot for that. Yes. All right. Um, and I had a question. Um, you have a license that was granted by the town in 2003, correct? A license for the motor vehicle junkyard? Yeah, we've got one there every year. Yep. This is the only year they haven't renewed it yet. Okay. So it's, um, I think, Mr. Um, Barrington, you provided us the copy of the um, license that had conditions that was from 2003, and it's the same conditions that exist up to the present? That was a year of imposed conditions, and those are the conditions are coming forward. Okay, I understand. Um, and so, um, one of the conditions is a six foot fence, and that's there, Mr. Kessler? Yes. Um, and um, one of the conditions is hours of operation, 8 to 5 p.m., Monday through Saturday. Is yes. That correct? Um, and the area outside of the fence, and I, I think of it as the front yard, the, the area between the fence and the road, um, it, it looks like it's permitted for uh, the offer of vehicles for sale. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and uh, it also provides that that area be grassed in and maintained in an attractive manner um, and graveled and so forth. Um, that's part of the conditions. Yeah. Um, I think those are my questions. Thank you very much. Um, I ask a follow up on one that was asked. Sure. Yep. Uh, we'll let you follow up and then Mr. Cass, go ahead. I just have one additional um, question, Mr. Casanova. Is your towing business, is it, do you advertise that you're 24-7? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, you said Mr. Day had tow trucks. Did he also tow from snows and parks and things like that and he brought his vehicles to the yard with the tow truck? Yeah, he used to tow for some of the apartments like Cherry Field and um, that other one over the railroad tracks. You know, some sort of, uh, so he didn't have a AAA no. um, dealership, but he was a tow truck bringing in cars all the time yeah. with That's his great. vehicle. Yes. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Foss's question. <coughs> I'll, I recognize Mr. That was Barrington. That's my question. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Go for it. No, go ahead. Sir. Mr. Cassoli, you said your junk your junkyard permit was not approved for 19, 2019? Um, I believe 2018. Last year? Yeah, I applied for it. Um, it said here because uh, they were waiting. Actually, I'll put it on this one over here. See, the approval was delayed due to concerns raised by the Department of Environmental Services. But then the town received communication from DES that the violations raised have been corrected. When was that, if you don't mind? That was uh, the end of last summer. Summer of 18. Yeah, he... he oh, uh, this says November 5th, 2018 minutes. Oh, that's when they had here, the, the, the hearing here. All right, so you reapplied for 19, correct? Yeah, in March. Okay, yeah. and? And then, I uh, uh, forget his name from... I uh, can't do his name right now. But the, uh, 
the man from the Department of Environmental Services, he came in, did an inspection, and there was like a couple of bolts there, and um, he just asked me to clean up a few things, and he gave me till uh, after the snow melt, it would be in the May. So the end of May, everything was cleaned up. I got a dumpster, filled it up. May hasn't come yet, sir. The oh, last May. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about so, 2019. Yeah. Don't, don't let Mr. Castanella yeah. finish, Mr. Fox. So I applied last last year, March, and the town didn't give me the uh, okay yet. Because they were waiting for the approval from... Uh, can't think of the name. From the DES. I think it was DES said it was, everything's been corrected. And he said something to Mr. Clark. He got an email right. So we're all set with them, and the town still didn't give me my license. Okay. okay, and as a present, 2019, you haven't received anything. Right, that's correct. Have you been denied, or no, no communication, or what? I don't know. I don't know why they have you sure you, Did you apply for one for 2019? No, not yet. It's okay. like in March. It's every March. Okay, all right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, the location of the property is critical to note in that um, immediately next door is a heavy truck repair center with at least um, 10 trucks outside, box trucks. Um, the zone, as I pointed out in the application, is an industrial use. Um, you know, the Supreme Court, when they look at table of uses, no town can ever list every single exact use, but the uses are really by categories. Um, if you have a manufacturer of, of a high-tech material, you don't have to have um, a permitted use that particularly names the high-tech material. Like um, They tend to be generic names. And the generic name that's there is a is what's permitted is heavy truck repair, which is done next door, and a um, trucking terminal. Now, um, Code Officer Clark is going to present to you apparently the National Association of Industrial and Office Properties for the purpose of commercial real estate listings. Um, defining this as a specialized distribution big building for the redistribution of goods from one truck to another truck. Um, I'd suggest that that's a highly specialized um, definition that may be adopted by the commercial realtors, but the standard that you have to apply is the plain meaning that's apparent to, to the public by the plain use of words. And um, the plain meaning in you know, Webster's Dictionary and any other dictionary would say that a truck terminal is a place where trucks come, they park, they're dispatched, um, they pick up loads or drop off loads, which is a transfer, and go somewhere else. Um, there's no question even using this definition being presented by Code Officer Clark is a staging area. Well, the goods and materials being transported are junk cars, and cars that are not operated, and cars that are being um, um, removed according to police officers. Um, that's what happens. I mean, there's no question that a, a tow truck is a truck. Um, there's no question that the office inside is the dispatch center and the mechanic center, and is a terminal. And more importantly, for 17 years, the officials in the town of Rollinsburg have recognized that running the tow trucks in and out um, falls within their table of uses for truck repair. You have the mechanic who's in the back repairing the tow trucks. And you have um, a truck terminal being a staging area of trucks coming in and going out. Um, you know, if the, I understand that maybe all of you are also the selectmen of the town or the selectmen acting as the Board of Adjustment or some are or some aren't. Um, if you want to change, no, so you're no. a separate service. So if the, if the selectmen want to pass a new table of uses and want to specifically 
deny this or make it broader or whatever, you know, that's what they can do um, under the legislative prerogative. Um, and of course, if they change the use now and you decide that it's a truck terminal, then, then it would then become a non-conforming use and there couldn't be any unreasonable um, expansion. Um, so that really is just plain ordinary sense, plain ordinary understanding of meaning. That is what's going on there, and it's a permitted use. Now you've got some side issues which need to be kept separate. One, my understanding is that the last junkyard permit, according to the minute, was specifically denied because of the, because of the, quote, Mr. Rollo explained the junkyard grandfathered that they were concerned about the towing service. So there's concern about the towing service is what caused the delay in November of 2018. Uh, Mr. Cast went out, um, was looking, he got some deadlines. We were a little bit later than the deadline imposed, but let's face it, um, December with Christmas and vacations and everything else tends to be kind of a dead month to get things done. And so this appeal being filed is to satisfy that section of it. We're not here necessarily to rule on the junkyard part. We're just here to rule upon whether or not um, the towing is a separate use from which a variance is required. Now, it is a separate use which would bring it under site review. Now, site review apparently hasn't been done to the planning board, um, and it seems to be a strong recommendation of um, uh, Code Officer Clark, that this does go to the planning board, it does go through site review, and then some issues can be addressed um, as to where they should park, whether instead of having gravel, which in a good March and April in New Hampshire, <coughs> and it's mud, and then I'm sure you all drove past there, and right now it's a mess. Um, but that's really up for site review to figure out, and once the uses can be approved or disapproved by this board, then it goes on to the planning board, then it goes back to the selectmen for the approval of the junkyard permit. But everybody agrees that you first have to decide you know, the uses and then you go on to the other things. Um, okay. If, I'm not done. I'm oh, sorry. That's grounds number one. Grounds number one is that it is clearly permitted within a reasonable definition of a truck terminal by ordinance and by implication. Number two is, is that it's a grandfathered use. Now, we all know that a grandfathered use cannot be unreasonably, cannot be expanded, um, but it doesn't mean there isn't any change or nature of a grandfathered use. Now, Mr. Day did have um, one um, tow truck, and he was going out and towing all the time. So the, the towing was already there. 17 years later, the testimony today is that um, there's three trucks that are active. Um, so maybe one truck has gone to three trucks, but he also had a front end loader that he moved trucks around with. So I submit that over 17 years, going from one truck and a front end loader to three trucks operational, five trucks are there, but usually they're off, is really not a significant expansion of a non-conforming use. I mean, it's a pretty big property. There's a truck repair center next door. There's lots of screening and stuff uh, between them um, and the next door neighbors. Um, there's no question that he has to abide by the hours of operation that are pursuant to the junkyard. Um, and, but, the junkyard really is, the reason junkyards have hours of operations is that junkyards have a lot of, you know, they, they, they take parts off. The easiest way to take a part off is to bang the nut off rather than saw it off and you saw it. So there's noise attributed to a junkyard operation when you start taking the parts out of a car. Um, when you take parts off of a junk, you don't do it daintily. Um, but having a, a tow truck come in and out occasionally doesn't seem to be a violation of the junkyard permit. It actually wasn't part of the junkyard. Um, so we feel that the, uh, the, you know, the presence and operation of tow trucks prior made it a, uh, a present non-conforming um, use. 
that um, has existed prior to the enactment of, of zoning as this, this junkyard, as far as we can see, goes all the way back to the 50s and all the way back before your zoning ordinance. Um, and during all that time, <coughs> you know, there was one tow truck, maybe another tow truck coming in and out of there, um, which make it a, a, a grandfathered use. Um, that's, our, that's our presentation. All right. Thank you, Attorney Barrington. So um, I'm going to... I think have another round of questions from the, the board and impose on Mr. Clark's patience. Mr. Voss? All set for right now, thank you. Okay. Mr. Hinsman? Uh, um, you aren't asking that the variance be granted on the basis of conversations that your client had with uh, the town of Rollinsford years ago, right? Because I didn't see that in the application for the for the variance and I'm questioning whether that can be raised if it wasn't uh, put in there. Um, not for the variance, but um, I mean, I think there is some collateral estoppel involved in which is part of our presentation today. But, but I'm saying so you I know it wasn't, you put that in it there. wasn't specifically in our um, written materials. I didn't focus in on that. Um, mm -hmm. But to the extent that we've put in the, the testimony and what he has, and I think the fact of um, estoppel is, I mean, estoppel is a legal um, ground, and you know, I think it certainly does apply. Um, I would amend my request at this point to incorporate the evidence presented that he did have express permission to have towing. What's the difference between a truck terminal and towing, and a towing business? You have to look at the use of the property. Everything in zoning has to do with the use of the property. And in our opinion, as I say, if the trucks come, they park, they're dispatched, they're repaired, and they go again. And they carry goods, which in this case is um, it's just a different type of truck. I mean, you could have a truck terminal of car transports. But you can have a truck terminal if it's a Ford or Toyota where they take cars out and they put cars back on again and take them to other people. I mean, I think truck terminal has to be given its broad definition. So you think it's, it's synonymous? Truck terminal and towing business is synonymous? They mean the same thing? You see, you're asking the towing business. What the vehicles do somewhere else is really irrelevant. Okay. What's relevant is what happens on this property. What's the use on the property and how it affects the neighbors? I did look at Webster's dictionary and I didn't, it doesn't specifically define uh, truck terminal as I could find it. It, it defines terminal, mm -hmm. and terminal usually means the first part of the definitions are end of life, and then the other subsidiary definitions are either end of a carrier line having facilities for the handling of freight and passengers. And the next definition is a freighter passenger station that is central to a considerable area or serves as a junction at any point with the lines. Um, all right. Thank you. Ms. Rowland? Ms. Cass? I have a couple questions. Um, and I'm not sure if Mr. Barrington or Mr. Casanelli, you want to answer these. So, you're requesting a variant. No, we're requesting an appeal of administrative decision. We're okay. not doing a variance right now. Okay. So, and that is to deny the use of cast showing. So, my understanding is it's it's your opinion that it's a non-conforming use from the original purchase of Days Auto Sausage. Correct? That's the alternative theory. Our first argument is that it's a conforming use because it's specifically allowed by your zoning ordinance in terms of truck repair and truck terminals. Okay, but in your application, you reference uh, non-conforming use of the zoning ordinance, section 5.2, correct? Yes, and I also, yes, that's the second argument. Okay, so from the testimony that we've had heard, so Mr. Casanelli first purchased the property and you had two tow trucks. 
Since that time, you've increased your business. You now have five to six tow trucks, correct? Five. Okay, five tow trucks now. So my reading from the definition of the license that was granted, which we've been provided, the most recent was from 2002, that it does limit your hours of operation between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. And you have indicated that you are a 24-7 towing operation, correct? Yes. Okay. So you did expand on that use since you acquired the property? I was always a 24-hour towing company. The phone rings, and I call my driver, and he'll go out and call. Okay, but pursuant to the license... Well, the junkyard license, yeah. Okay. So are you saying that this junkyard license doesn't have bearing on your, your towing operation? Yes, because it's a permitted use. So it's one and the same. So it's these not, conditions. So these conditions that you've submitted, you're saying, have nothing to do with cast towing? They don't, they have nothing to do with cast towing except to the extent that they're operating the junkyard. To the extent that they're, I mean, correct. It has nothing to do with the junkyard. Okay. So I think I'll hold the rest of my questions until we go a little further. <coughs> Mr. Clark. Uh, by, by the way, can I just, sit, John ends, but it does say, and he is subject to annual renewal process for his junkyard permit, and no objection has been made to tow trucks. So it was pled, if you will. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I read through it quickly. That's why I asked. Um, well, okay. I guess it, I didn't see the conversation. Really done. No, I didn't note that. That's evidence. I, I have to ask you another question, Attorney Grant, based on your, your response. I thought one of your arguments tonight, you're saying the salvage yard and the towing are separate, they have nothing to do with one another, and I thought part of your arguments are that one is incidental to the other. Again, there's, there's argument one and there's argument two. You know, argument one is that it's a permitted use. If you find that it's a permitted use, then it's not subject to the hours set forth for the junkyard. If you find that the towing business is, you know, it's not as much, I mean, it really, I, I mean, I, the third argument, if you will, is that it's ancillary and that it's part of the, the junkyard business. Um, you know, but and if, it were, if we did find it was ancillary incidental, it would be limited to the junkyard hours? Yes. Okay. Mr. Clark, thanks thank for your patience. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I do agree with Mr. Barrington's assessment on the um, payable use regulations that Town certainly, or no municipality can list and describe every single use that's available. However, Rollinsford, as in most municipalities, has a permissive ordinance, which is to say it says what is allowed, not what is not allowed. So it's to an applicant's responsibility to prove that what his use is fits within one of the allowable. Um, Table of the, the, one of the allowable uses listed in the regulations. Um, in this particular case, and I, I handed out the definition from the commercial real estate company. Um, I also looked up, and all the simple, simplified ones I have are the same as the ones that you discovered. That is basically a terminal used for loading or unloading a freight. In this case, and um, excuse me, backing up the. Uh, discussion about the accessory use. I also left on your table, these are from the New Hampshire Secretary of State's office that clearly show these are two separate, standalone, independent principal businesses. One is not accessory to the other. Um, the board member pointed out it would have to be incidental and subordinate to the principal use, which it certainly is not. So, I don't think that Mr. Cassinelli's description of the towing fits either of the descriptions, or any description that we can find of trucking terminal. So then we decide we have to establish what it is. And it is a separate standalone towing use that does operate 24-7 that has not been in use for the whole time of Mr. Day's ownership. It did start and blossom under Mr. Cassinelli's ownership. Part of the issue with the licensing is that that connection was finally made 
no question that the town has issued permits for the operation of the junkyard for as many years as Mr. Cassinelli has owned it. And there never has been an issue until, um, I believe it was Mr. Watson, Don Watson from DES, the individual that brought to our attention some potential violations of state regulations of Mr. Cassinelli's operation from the storage yard, not, not the toy, but from the storage yard. So we went over, did a site visit, took pictures, as Mr. Castelli described, there were issues that have been corrected. But during the course of that investigation, that's when it came to mind, or I should say came to light, that the towing operation had increased dramatically during the years that the junkyard had been licensed. And shame on us for missing it for so many years, but it was brought up. We had to address it. Um, one of the reasons was the uh, were the hours of operation, as you pointed out. I mean, if it was going to be accessory to that, it had to be limited to eight to five, which clearly isn't. Um, during the hearing at Mr. Barrington mentioned, we had testimony from abutters that um, basically that there were operations pretty much all hours, I mean, three and four in the morning, and that was corroborated by uh, Police Chief Ducharme, who brought in a number of. Uh, incident reports um, of what his officers had to respond to at Mr. Castanelli's office uh, location. So those things all kind of snowballed and pretty much brought us to where we are now that we have made a determination. We being, you know, I, I did bring this to the attention of the select board. They did agree, which was the basis for my letter, um, that they are, we feel they are two separate businesses and it is not grandfathered in that it was never allowed in the first place as operated today. Um, and, um, I think that's it. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Um, I'm going to start at the other end of the table and go this way this time. Ms. Cass. Um, so, Mr. Clark, when um, all of this additional evidence came forward, was this at the planning board hearing? When did this all come forth? The, the police reports, the, the abutters or, or the neighbors complaining? When did all this come out? There was up? a special public hearing held by the select board okay. for that specific purpose. And when was this held? Do you recall? November of 18, I think. Okay. Of what year? 18. Okay. November 5th, 2018. And I was on the junkyard application. Correct, but it, it came forward that this cast towing was a, a, a much larger scale operation than just one tow truck towing junk cars to the junkyard. That's correct. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Mr. Hinsman? Mr. Clark, what um, weight should the board give, in your opinion, if you have an opinion, as to Mr. Um, Castanelli's arguments that essentially the, the town gave him an okay on the, the towing business years ago when he relied on that? Um, I can understand the reason that he's stating that, and I can't speak for Mr. Jansen or Mr. Dion course, but um, it may have been they weren't aware, as we weren't aware, of the extent of the use of the towing operation. And it, as far as I can remember, the um, permits that have been issued didn't mention a separate towing operation. So when Mr. Castanelli spoke to Mr. Jansen and Mr. Dion, I'm just presuming that they are describing it, saying that it was allowed as it has been used. Um, without knowledge of the towing. All right, thank you. Mr. Potts? Yeah, I got a bunch of them trying to figure out how I want to weigh them out here. I'm really familiar with the junkyard. I've yes. lived here for 40 some odd years, so I knew Ch uh, Chicky Day, right? I'm well aware of the junkyard. His business is within the industrial area, yes. right? It looks like it's been deemed as a trucking terminal for lack of, I guess, a better 
term? Um, I think you'll find that there is a definition, uh, I mean, excuse me, there's a use listed in, yeah. as a auto junkyard. So he no, is, no, I'm talking the towing company. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, okay. I mean, to me, yes. the, junk, the junkyard is over here. Oh, Looks at the whole issue okay. is yeah. gas towing. Is it not? Or am I misreading this? Oh. Um, I think the issue at hand is Mr. Castanelli's argument that cash towing should be allowed to continue when, as an adjunct to. Let him finish, Mr. Foss. Thank you. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I believe that the argument is that they should be considered together, they should be considered as one, so that the license issued by the town also covers the towing. It's, it's my opinion that it does not, that it's a separate standalone business, and hence the uh, supplement, I mean, the uh, following application for the variance. If this appeal is denied, then a petition is only going for variance to operate a towing service in that industrial zoning district. Why would he need to do that where it's to actually, if it falls underneath the trucking terminal? Well, I just, you know, I've read this and I could go here and I read it and I could go here yes. and then I could be any place because there's nothing cutting, cut and dry here. There isn't. I agree, and that, that I think is part of the problem, but um, at this point I'm disagreeing with the definition of trucking terminal as applied to a towing service. I, I don't see that it fits the definition. I, I can understand that, but on the same token, you may look at one where it would be freight. Now, CNJ a bus company goes to terminals and they pick up people. Uh, there's no freight. Um, I mean, there's other there's other towing companies within the town of Rollinsville. Um, Who would that be, Mr. Foss? Oh, let's um, let Mr. Foss ask his questions <laughs> and let Mr. Clark respond <laughs> to his questions. And, uh, we'll have a ch pro an opportunity to deliberate after the after the hearing. Go ahead, Mr. Foss. Um, or, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Clark. Uh, thank you, sir. I I agree, but I don't think there's separate towing services, I think they are accessory to like They're Paul's business. Integrity Auto or Joe's Auto or, or they, agree. Yeah, they don't do it as 24-7 triple A approved. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Foss. Um, Mr. Clark, um, I'm 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 struggling with um, a couple of things. One is um, is is the town's position that that Mr. Uh, Casanelli can't have a tow truck to operate his salvage business. Um, it's the town's position that if this appeal is denied, then it is not a permitted use, and not that he cannot do it, but he cannot do it without the appropriate permission, as Mr. Barrington outlined from the Zoning Board of Adjustment, and then site review in front of the Planning Board, and then the um, uh, license issued by the Select Board. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought it was going to be a different answer. I thought the answer was that he could have a tow truck for his tow business, but he could only use it between certain hours and... Oh, uh, my apology. Yes. Okay. If he had a tow truck that was operating just for days auto salvage, during those, during those hours, it would be similar to the other tow trucks that we discussed that is clearly accessory to that use. And then it's the expansion that, um, that you need is a kind of, a, a, it's not a permitted use because it's, it, you believe it's different in nature and kind it's a, than the salvage business. Yes, sir. It's a separate principal business. Okay. Um, and I'll give Mr. Barrington a chance to answer this question as well, but um, I'm fairly new to the zoning board chair um, position, and this is my first zoning board appe or appeal of an administrative decision. Um, and I'm a little confused. It looks to me, from what I've read, that um, we pretty much defer to your reading of the ordinance. Like, if we think that you read the ordinance wrong, um, we have to have a pretty good reason to disagree with you. Yes, sir. I mean, we look at the face of the, the language of the ordinance. Yes, they, they appeal administrative decisions don't happen with a regular basis. I mean, I was zoning administrative building official over for over 30 years, and 
there may have been six or eight. It, it doesn't happen on a regular basis at all. So it's, it's kind of, so it's. I'm trying to get my get the concept. And again, Mr. Barrington, I'll give you a chance to address the question. But it sounds to me like even if we disagreed with you, if we believe that you are making a reasonable reading of the ordinance as it, it as it's printed, that we defer to the administrative people. Is that? Yes, sir. That would be my interpretation. All right, and I, Mr. Barrington, I'll come definitely give you a chance to address that question. And then, um, it, I, I'll ask this question to Mr. Barrington as well, but it sounded to me that, that Mr. Cassinelli does not object to going to site plan review for the towing business. I, I don't believe he does object to it, I'm sorry. So he, um, it's not a claim that the towing business is grandfathered and exempt from site plan review. It's just, it, the question is whether that use is permitted on the, on the site? Um, I think it is more of a question of whether that use is grandfathered, in which case he wouldn't <coughs> need to go to site review because it would be a permitted use. Oh, okay. So he is claiming exemption from site plan review? I, I believe so. Okay. Um, Mr. Barrington, before I open it to public comment, um, I want to give you a chance to respond to those two questions. And also, if there are any questions you want us to put to Mr. Clark, let, let us know. The, the question of Mr. Clark is, because I understand you want to go through the chair, is really following up exactly what you said. Um, as a truck terminal where he's parked tow trucks, um, he didn't need a special permit for that purpose. It's not like a junkyard. It doesn't require a permit. Correct? Um, if I may. Go ahead, Mr. Clark. If it was a trucking terminal and the town agreed to that definition, there never was a trucking terminal at that site. So Mr. Castanelli would still have to proceed to the zoning, I mean, excuse me, to the planning board for site review of that particular use. And I believe, the, the I don't mean to jump in, Mr. Barrington, but I believe it's section 8.22.1 requires site plan review for all commercial and industrial uses permitted. So if it's a permitted use, I think it requires site plan. Yes, sir. And that's never been required. As in up to this point. And, um, and the buildings, the buildings on the property, which would require a building permit, is, is a garage where the repairs are done. Otherwise, this entire site is just blank ground upon which a truck is parked. It's no improvements. Um, you don't actually need a permit to, for a parking lot. You don't have to go through site plan for a parking lot. Um, it already has an office. The office is a permitted use for the dispatch. So the use of this property is to park a truck. So the question is, the use that you're seeking, that you're seeking to argue is an accessory to the salvage yard, or...? It's all it three. It, you know, but the first extent, it's as I've laid out the different things. It's permitted use because it's within the common sense understanding of a truck <coughs> terminal. Trucks can carry many things, and these trucks carry cars, and it's always been there. Um, if it's to the extent that the new use is recognized as being permitted then the town can say, well, then this should have gone to the planning board because, as you pointed out, every commercial use is subject to site review regulation. So he has specifically stated, and he is willing to submit the site review regulation if they want to have concerns about where the trucks are. But the other thing you have to understand is there's an impound lot which takes up almost a quarter of the parked areas. So those are cars that are coming in being parked within the perimeter of the junkyard and store, which is basically what a junkyard, <coughs> all junkyards do. Um, Rogers Auto Body does towing 24-7 for the Rollinsburg Police. Um, I don't know whether the, whether, uh, the auto body shop has required hours of operation, but to the extent that he's, he, he, you know, he's running that, So if you find that 
his actual use of the property is the functional equivalent of a truck terminal. And you only have like seven authorized uses listed, and that would have to go to the planning board. So he agrees that it would go to the site plan review. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Barrington. Um, are there other questions for Mr. Clark from the board before I open it for public comment? Yep, yeah, I have one. Uh, Mr. Voss? Sorry, Tom. No, sir. It's quite all right. Clarification. I, I, if I'm wrong, just please tell me I'm wrong because I'm, I think I'm headed down the right road. It's a big field that, that the towing business, cash towing, is grandfathered under the junkyard setting? Or do they feel that cash tolling is completely separate from the junkyard? I think that would be better answered by them, but in my opinion, I think they think it's grandfathered under the days auto salvage. Okay. All right. I think I got a much better handle on all of this. Oh, I hope you guys had it better than me. All right. Um, well, all I'm going to say is they're alternative theories. I mean, it's a permitted use, it's an ancillary use, it's grandfathered use, and it hasn't really substantially changed over all these years. I do have another question. All right, we'll keep <laughs> the public waiting just a minute longer, yeah. Ms. Cass. Go ahead. Um, so, Mr. Clark, again, so you, you spoke to us about that the expanded use of cast towing just came to light of the select board in the town of Rollinsford um, in late 2018 when there were additional police calls, neighbor complaints. I, I believe we discussed it in November of 18, but um, it happened earlier that year when we were doing the site review with uh, Mr. Watson from DES. So it was within a year. It started, yes. Okay, yes. so it hasn't been prolonged. It's it's only been within the last <coughs> yes. year, fourteen months, that the town of Rollinsford has become aware that cast towing isn't just one or two tow trucks. It's a, an actual full fledged. That's business. correct. Okay. And also, if I may, once again, it is a separate business as established by the Secretary of State. Correct. And Mr. Barrington, I just um, want to clarify. So Rogers Auto Body, you said, does towing for the Rollinsford Police Department. And my understanding that Rogers um, Auto Body is in Summersworth, not in Rollinsford. But they no longer do business out of the Rollinsford location. So it's a, I believe it's a completely different municipality that they do business out of. They were in Rollinsford. When did they move out? Uh, I don't think it's been in operation for quite some time. I believe it's in Summersworth now. Yeah. He still, as far as I know, he's still in Rollinsford also. He had two locations. He I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah, I can treat that as a Yeah, I, I just wanted the clarification. Yeah, I, okay. I, I, I knew he was still here in Rollinsford. Okay. And the son or something was in Somersworth. Yeah, the son has the primary. That's yeah. where. Okay, thank you. I'm good. All right, members of the public, um, there are at least two things that you can do. One is to um, provide additional facts for the board to consider on the on the appeal uh, and whether or not uh, the, the board should um, affirm, reject, or modify uh, the, the letter, the cease and desist letter that Mr. Clark sent. Um, and you can also, if you have an opinion about what the board should do, you're welcome to share that. Um, I would request that you direct your comments to me and that you state, so we get a clear record, your name and address so that um, um, our long-suffering recording secretary can, can get home before midnight. So, questions or comments from the public? Yes, sir. Hi, uh, Jim Ardu. I am uh, 144 Summersworth Road, <coughs> a butter on the northern edge of the property. Uh, I've lived there for 36 years, so I got to watch I knew Tricky Dag and the son quite well. Um, I'm so sorry. Uh, can you tell me your first name again and your address? Jim Argue, uh -huh. at RG, uh -huh. 144 Summers Road. Okay, thank you. Um, it is a complete stretch to say what Chicky was doing, because I lived next to him for 18 years when he was running the business, is nothing in comparison to what they're doing today. Um, if you go from one tow truck to six tow trucks, that's a 600% increase. Um, they are running all the time, and they're annoying. Um, I, I, so, for advice for me to, to you, 
is that you should uh, play hardball here. Uh, this is not a business that is playing by the rules and they haven't for a long time. Um, I recently had my well water sampled for the second time by the state because of contamination emanating from, from the junkyard. Um, the, uh, Mr. Casanelli back in the day uh, uh, was filling property and he filled in wetlands on his property and my property which I reported to the state and he was ordered to remediate. Um, my next door neighbor, Mr. Arkwell, has, has raised comments with the concerns with the use of the uh, compliance with the permit. And there's many uh, instances where they're not in compliance and haven't been, and they comply when they're forced. Uh, this is not a business that makes a good neighbor we have a tow truck driver at uh, 2 in the morning that decides to do donuts uh, in the middle of the road and through the lawn of the junkyard. I go out the next morning and find it's also on my property, which I consider trespassing. Um, there, this is a unique neighborhood. There's houses and businesses, um, about one for one. So if you're going to run a business in this neighborhood, granted it's owned industrial, and I think that's something we need to refine a little bit, um, you would need a business that operates in a manner that the neighbors feel good about. Um, many of the businesses are owned uh, by homeowners, and, and there's, they perform at a high level. I point to uh, Wentworth's oil recycling business out back. Looks to be a spectacular business, well run, well standard, I don't have any complaints with it. These guys uh, look more like a criminal network to me. I think you should throw them out of the town permanently. It's Paul Castle, Heritage Drive. I'm against the approval of, of the cast tone, tone and business re request. Both businesses will expand land uses that handle hazardous uh, materials and pose a huge risk to the water quality right. of the Warren Brook and Fresh Creek watershed and aquifer. The aquifer is used by approximately 50 homes in, on the Rollinsford Road, Moses Carr, Heritage Tribe neighborhoods, along with Summersworth Road. And Mr. Chairman, I, I would like to give, give the board three documents. Put this burden on you. Did you happen to make copies that can be shared with Mr. Barrington and Mr. Clark? No, I didn't. Okay. I didn't realize what was the amount of people and someone. Not a worry. What we'll do is I'll um, I'll I, share my copy yeah, I'll with. I'll mine as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, this has to do with water quality. It has nothing to do with this application. This is public comment, and um, Mr. Barrington, my intentions, and the board can certainly take up relevance um, uh, if you. Uh, I uh, want to address that in your res response. Would you like that? Yes. Mr. Kessel, go ahead. Yes, the first letter is dated no November 2nd, which is from the New Hampshire uh, Department of, of Environmental Services. It says, subject, gasoline-related test of the water supply well at, at my premises. But several na neighbors got, got this throughout Moses Car and Heritage Drive, and I'm not sure about Rollins Road or Sunshine yeah, Road, it. and so yes, they get it also. So okay, I'll just quickly cover this. A review of the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services records indicates that the property you own may be served by a well located near, near an area that is potentially vulnerable to gasoline contamination. NHDS does not know whether or not whether gasoline components such as methanol I should review, which is MTBE, I can't say it, <laughs> have, have impacted you well. Uh, laboratory analysis is of your drinking water is the only way to find out. And to summarize, uh, uh, I took a uh, s sample of, of my well, and, and this letter did, did not alarm me. I said, you know, it's probably, you know, talking about something a airborne. Was I wrong? And I'll go into detail with the second letter. Well, the second letter came, 
came, came to me and where the stars was. Okay, I'm not going to talk, talk about everything, but this was a email sent to me by uh, the same department, uh, DES of New Hampshire, and it says no VOCs were detected. The next paragraph bothers me to the second. It says, although water quality in wells is generally stable, mine is not, okay, I'm not going to talk, talk about the details, but mine is not stable. NSDA recommends that individuals with private wells have the well water tested on a regular basis. We also recommend that testing is conducted on a more frequent basis in areas where, with land uses that handle hazardous chemicals. And uh, the third one is a map. And I got this from the NSDES website. And on, if you hold it correctly, on, it shows Summersworth Road. And I was absolutely shocked to see a couple things here. And that is, Moses' car is like a quarter mile away from uh, Cast Home and, and from the industrial section. Uh, also, there's Warren Brook. It, it actually crosses the road, Summersworth Road. There's a culvert at Northern Truck. Well, that carries the water uh, down down into Tromley Brook. So if this uh, yeah, brook goes through the junkyard. Oh, okay. So we have a direct line of of uh, you know if there's a illicit discharge, which is highly illegal, if that happens. That is going to carry the uh, the pollutants all the way down into Tromley Brook and and into the aquifer of Moses Car and Heather's Drive and Rollins Road and Summersworth Road and uh, even go go down into Fresh Creek and into uh, the Salmon Falls River. Now, what's also disturbing is. Uh, the state has test sites. The nearest place that they test the water is I-06, which is Fresh Creek, which is three miles away. So, you know, the state is t telling us, well, you t test your water and you, t uh, you know, tell us if there's a problem. Well, that's way, way, way too late. We'd be drinking, drinking contaminated water, or you know, serving it to you know to, to our children, and no one is testing the water quality, except you know, you know it's being uh, uh, passed on to to, uh, to the homeowners. There is homeowners that, that have not tested their well water for 30 years until this time. Uh, what else? <coughs> and also, uh, the test site, which is three to three miles away, I'm not even sure if the state tests for gasoline with VOCs. And in fact, when you buy and sell a house, this is not a standard test. You, you don't have to test for VOCs or MTBE. So there's people buying houses now that their wells could be could be contaminated and they don't they don't even know about it. And and you might say, well, you know the you know homeowner is gonna know. I had parents that were serviced by a town well for over ten years and they found out that their water was you know contaminated with gasoline also. So so it's something if. And who, who tests for, uh, you know, the, uh, who tests their well, uh, you know, well water quality and pays like three, four hundred dollars every, every six, six months to do it? Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome. Other members of the call.
Mr. Chairman, my name is Pauline O'Neill. I live at 30 Old Indigo Hill Road, which is between the junkyard and the river behind him and towards Summersworth. I'm so sorry. Can you repeat your name? Yes, Pauline O'Neill. Okay, thank you. I am here tonight as I received a notification of the Castanelli auto salvage request for a variance um, on Summersworth Road. My property abuts his, it abuts mine, and my concern is a letter I received from the Department of Environmental Services stating that there has been a recent detection of methyl tertiary butyl ether, a component of gasoline in a well located near my property. I do not know where this contaminated well is, but I feel that any increase in the salvage operations at the Castanelli business could be a detriment to the wells in the area. So even though they think it has nothing to do with the business, it has everything to do with our water. David Arkwell, 190 Summersworth Road, Robinson. Um, there's a number of things that just weren't factual. Um, them trucks being in and out of there two or three times a night is just an absolute lie. Um, I didn't bring my notes with me, but back along I had set up a game camera at the end of my driveway at the shop next to the junkyard. And I can't remember now if it was 30 trips or 60 trips in and out one night. And that's not unusual. I mean, there's, there's times them trucks are in and out of there. Sometimes they're not gone three minutes and they're back again. More often than not, they're coming in with no, with nothing on them, no cars on them. It, and then at night, they use the junkyard as, a, as kind of a play area for the drivers to get out there and hoot and holler and have a hell of a time while they're waiting for calls. Um, so, I mean, that, that's just an absolute lie. And another thing that really bothered me is the, the storage area. To the, if you're standing in the street looking at his facility, to the left of his garage area, that was never there under Chicky Day. That was never there. He filled all that in and made that, that yard on that for the, for the towing business. Now, back in 2001, 2002, when he first took it over, we had quite a little ruckus right down here to town hall over the whole thing. And they assured us that he wasn't going to be able to expand his operation, that it, he was in the junkyard under a grandfather clause, and he could not expand the operation. Well, he has done nothing but expand that operation. And nobody in town wanted to get involved and take on the fight. But he has, he has expanded it in every sense of the word. Um, I'm trying to think of all um, So anyway, he has expanded it. That area to the left of the garage should not even be there. He talks about that garage being the facility that he works on his trucks. You couldn't fit one of his trucks in that garage. It wouldn't fit through the door. So I mean, that's a lie. Um, he was, back in 01, 02, he assured the the selectman that he was going to clean that place up and make it respectable and he's done anything but. The place is a bigger pig pen now than it ever was. I bought the prop, my property right next door to him in 1985. I lived next to Chicky for 16 years or so. Chicky worked full time at Davidson Rebel. Monday through Friday and the only time you ever even knew that junkyard was there was on Saturday mornings. And Chicky's idea of towing is he'd go out once a week, twice a week, whatever, grab a car, bring it into the yard. He never did any any uh, towing for uh, AAA or anything even remotely close to that. Any towing he did was just to salvage cars coming in and out, or maybe he'd have a friend that needed the vehicle towed and he'd go tow it. But these guys have expanded that in every, every sense of the word. And the other thing to, to keep in mind through all this is those drivers in and out all hours of the night, their trucks have been involved in, in trucks and drivers have been involved in, in drug deals on more than one occasion. They've been involved in the drivers riding around town with BB guns shooting out some poor 
person that went to bed for the night, they're shooting out the windows in their cars in, you know, Dover, Summersworth, Berwick, I've forgotten all that, and several hundred windows shot out by the clowns that he employs. So it's not as if we're standing, we're dealing with stand-up people. These people are absolute bottom of the barrel. They're the worst neighbors you could ever have. You give him an inch, he's going to take a mile. That's basically what I've got to say. Mr. members of the public. Mr. Barrington, I'll uh, offer you and, and Mr. Casanelli an opportunity to rebut or to add any additional information to the record if you want. And same for Mr. Clark. Well, the <clears throat> first of all, um, this is not a gas station. Whatever ground contamination may have happened, there's no indication whatsoever that it's linked to this business and has nothing to do with tow trucks. That's right. Are you tow truck with diesel or gas? Diesel. I don't think diesel even has any TV, does it? So we'll hear about the tow truck operation of diesel vehicles and all that is um, I guess I'm a little confused by that, Mr. Barrington, because the salvage yard as I recall, one of the conditions of the, of the junkyard license is that it requires very careful procedures for handling the fluids that are in the cars, the gasoline and the oil. We're not here to renew the junkyard program. We're here to address towing service. Okay, and again, I'm still confused. Your position is that each and every car coming into the impound lot, and like there's never a car that leaks gasoline or oil? where that's impossible? Yeah, it's possible, that, but I do have uh, pans that they would put under any leak in the car that they would see on the tow truck. Okay. Um, the, one of the concerns, I think, um, and this is not going to be comforting to the members of the public who I appreciate your taking the time to add to the record and share your concerns, um, this is an administrative appeal at this point, and um, our we really are limited in the scope of what we can appropriately consider. Um, the impacts on groundwater may be relevant uh, when, if and when we reach the question of a variance, um, but uh, it appears to me that our um, inquiry on the appeal is limited to whether or not we believe Mr. Clark read the ordinance correctly. Um, but, but I guess in that regard, Mr. Barrington, I, I hope you'll be ready to address um, cons the the abutter's concerns because in terms of on a variance dealing with the spirit and, and intent of the ordinance and dealing with the, uh, the element of public safety, uh, it seems like uh, groundwater and the aquifer protection district overlay are squarely going to be an, an issue once we, if we reach that, that piece of it. So um, I, am, I am concerned about that, but I do need to caution the public that on this on this appeal portion of it, uh, groundwater may not be something that we can <coughs> uh, give much uh, direct weight to. Okay, thank you for addressing that question, Mr. Uh, Mr. Barrington. Uh, Mr. Clark. I'm all set, thank you, sir. All set. Are there questions from the board before I close the public hearing? On the whole thing, or just the first portion? Um, any questions that you might want to, it's on the appeal. Okay. We're still on the appeal. And it's questions for Mr. Barrington, Mr. Casanelli, Mr. Clark. Good, thank you. Okay. In? Okay. I'm okay. You're okay? I'm good. Okay. And you've had a chance to wrap up. So um, I'll close. Uh, actually, I guess before I close the public hearing, um, I do want to give both Mr. Clark and Mr. Uh, Barrington, Mr. Casanelli, if you want to weigh in. I've tried to keep careful notes of factual assertions um, so that any findings of fact that the board makes um, are, um, we can be sure if it's either undisputed or if it's a fact that is asserted by um, either the applicant, the appellant, or the, uh, or the town. Um, so here's what I have listed, and if there's anything in addition or any corrections that you think I need to make, let me know. Uh, and I apologize for how long this has already gotten. Um, so there is an, um, 
the, the town ordinance does not currently permit open lot storage uh, or sale of junk and salvage materials, and I believe that's undisputed, the current ordinance. That's correct. It does not permit open lot storage or sale of drug or solid materials. Agreed or Okay, believe it's not relevant. Okay, um, but the the day and cast um, salvage yard was an existing non-conforming use at the time the ordinance was adopted. That is agreed. Yes. Yes. I'm not sure how we get one without the other, but that's. Uh, in 1992-93, the town granted Mr. Day a uh, motor vehicle junkyard license, and in 2003 granted Mr. Casanelli a junkyard license, motor vehicle junkyard license. Agreed? They have an annual junkyard licenses granted ever since it began, okay. not just those two times. So, and each year thereafter, until 2018. I don't even know when the first one was. It was quite a while ago, because the day started in 1959. All right. Um, and then I think we did review the conditions um, portion, um, and we agree that the conditions in the license exist. You disagree on the relevance of them, correct? Yes. Well, they apply to one out of two out of three, but not out of one. Okay. Um, And on December 17th, Mr. Clark, the town code enforcement officer, notified the applicant that the non-conforming auto salvage operation could remain subject to the motor vehicle junkyard license. Yes, sir. Um, but on the same date, you notified the applicant that cast towing was not a permitted use and was not a permitted <coughs> use. Sure. And again, the, um, the position of Mr. Casanelli is that that's a fact, but it was an, an error to send that letter. Is that right, Mr. Barrington? Correct. Um, and I guess, well, let, let's. Um, the ordinance table of uses permits trucking terminals in the industrial zone, and this is a parcel in the industrial zone, and again, that's agreed by both parties. Yes. Um, the ordinance does not define trucking terminal. Um, Mr. Casanelli asserts that any business that uses trucks um, as part of its operations would qualify as a trucking terminal if the trucks are parked on site. Um, and um, I believe that Mr. Clark asserts that it's not a trucking terminal unless it involves the use of the, the, the movement of freight. Well, in our position is that the patrol trucks move cars, okay. which is the equivalent of freight. Sometimes Microsoft Word is not my friend. It is, it is relevant um, because I, I, I think that the board is going to have to determine if, if what has occurred is just a natural, a natural kind of gradual evolution of the business that was encompassed by the original nonconforming use, which the, the statute allows and the decisions of the Supreme Court also allow. Uh, or whether this is in fact a changed use, whether it has grown so much 
that is a substantially changed use. So for that um, purpose, I think there are currently five trucks currently used by Mr. Casanelli. Yes. Um, and um, previously, Mr. Day used one. Yes. Um, and um, my notes indicate one or more tow trucks have historically been an accessory to the salvage yard use. Is that agreed? Yes. All right. Um, and um, this is a, this is a, I'm not sure that there is testimony on this point, so feel free to correct me if I'm wrong or if I'm incorrectly enlarging the uh, record. But the tow trucks are currently parked at the front of the lot near the road, outside the fence. Yes. It's um, on a sketch. It's part of the record. Okay. Thank you. Um, and the towing company currently operates 24/7. I believe that's an agreed upon fact. Um, well, I think it's contested whether they go in and out of the lot 24 7. There's conflicting testimony on that. Okay. So, um, I think we've already covered this one, but the, the business is located in the industrial zone in town, and there was uh, quite a, quite a few people that referred to that. Um, um, and um, Mr. Casanelli states that he talked to Ed Jansen and Al Dion about tow trucks and towing services, um, uh, and agreed that they wouldn't be in and out 24 hours a day. He currently works on police calls, AAA, GEICO, and also operates the salvage yard. Is that agreed? Yes, but in addition, that Mr. Jensen and Mr. Dayon were aware of the tow truck okay. business. It's been open advertised. It's on every truck. This is not a hidden use. You could say an open and notorious. Um, and, and it's, there's conflicting testimony on the number of entries and departures, particularly at night. Um, it's agreed that there are separate trade names for the salvage and the um, towing business. Yes. Um, and it, it, I believe the testimony was one tax return for the salvage and the towing business. Yes. Um, tax return in each or consolidated? Which way? One same tax ID number. The same tax ID number and one consolidated return. And also the testimony was all the employees are <coughs> shared. I'm sorry? The employees are shared. They both work for junks and they work for towing. Okay. And there's a total of five employees? Or did I get that number Six. Wrong? Six. is undisputed. Um, Mr. Barrington offered, and I think Mr. Casanelli agrees, that there's a truck repair center next door um, that operates in the same zone. Uh, and there may be a disagreement about the relevance of that for the, for the deciding of whether or not Mr. Trump was in there. Um, and I, we may have covered this, and I apologize, Mr. Barrington, but your, your position was that the trucks are dispatched, drop loads, and, and there's a safety area, and that's been going on for the whole time that Mr. Casanelli has owned the property. Um, is that a disputed fact, or you believe it doesn't affect whether or not the board affirms or...? I, I don't think it's relevant to the decision, sir. Again, it was agreed that not the table of uses can't list every permissible use. Um, it, it may be agreed that the applicant has to show how a use fits in with the ordinance. I know Mr. Um, Clark offered that. Is there any disagreement on that point? 
No. Um, and yeah, terminal is for loading and unloading a freight. That's the that's the disagreement of uh, about that term. Um, Mr. Clark testified that there was a offer, you know, stated that DES brought to, uh, to the town's attention a specific, specific set of circumstances at the junkyard, at the salvage yard, I apologize, um, and that it was during the investigation of those concerns that Mr. Clark learned about the scope of the towing business. Is that disputed? Right. No, that's, that's why I come up. I mean, how long has Tom Clark been your towed officer? He was full time Dover, so I don't think he's going to get that long. Yeah, they've been part time for the town for 25 years. Yeah. I guess Mr. Clark hasn't said anything in 25 years until 2018. Well, I, we'll have a chance to deliberate it, Mr. Barrington, but I, I'm not sure that the law requires Mr. Clark to go around 24 hours a day for all of those 25 years looking into people's property either. Um, he he has a job to do and when his job brings him there and he discovers something, uh, it's like when the police are called to a place and they discover a situation, they investigate the situation that they're presented with. And they're not stopped from doing their job because somebody had been running a drug business, say, in a, in a location for 25 years. Um, when they when they get to the scene, they're they're authorized to respond, right? And that's why the fact that it's open and notorious as opposed to late, the drug dealers are hiding. These trucks have been parked next to the main inlet and outlet of the... I mean, I'm sure Mr. Clark would agree that he's driven by here and seen tow trucks over the past 25 years. Okay. Um, so we'll... I'll, be sure that however we treat that fact, um, that we note that, that there's a disagreement about whether the town, uh, you know, the, the extent to which the town was on notice and to what extent the town had a legal duty. Um, but it, but ultimately, the question for us is whether or not we think that Mr. Clark misread the stat, the, the ordinance. And, and the town had given permission through its selectmen. Yeah. Um, and through its annual junkyard review permit, which allowed any issue to be raised 17 years. Okay. Um, and I think it's agreed the impound lot takes about a quarter of the area. I would defer to Ms. Castanella and to the corner of it. And it sounds like there's disagreement about the extent to um, which other towing services operate in town and to the, ex the extent to which they um, uh, uh, operate 24-7. He's asking, do you think the impound area is about 25% of the yard? Probably smaller than that. Yeah, it's smaller than that. It was only like 40 feet by 40 feet, 40 by 60, something like that. Are there any additional facts that you believe the board should have in mind as it's considering the appeal? Incorporate our pleadings. Okay. Right. Mr. Clark? I, I do have one in light of Mr. Casnelli's information that it's the same tax ID on the state, um, Secretary of State website, there are two different business IDs. It's a trade name. Every trade name has a different number, the tax is different. So the business ID just goes with the LLC and the trade name. And one's a trade name, not an entity. Dave's Auto Salvage is a trade name. All right, um, members of the board, I hope I didn't belabor it too much, but I wanted to be sure that we have a clear record because one of the things, if this goes up on appeal, the court is going to be looking for is clear findings of fact from our panel about what what the evidence was that we received. So um, I wanted to take some care with that, and I appreciate everyone's patience. Um, are there any questions from the board for either party? I do have one since this has just been risen. So with regard to the names, so Days Auto Salvage is a trade name. So my reading of this is Cast Towing LLC. They are the primary company. And Days Auto Salvage, is, you're, you're indicating, is the secondary company? They're the subordinate company to Cast Towing? 
this application has to do with use of the land and not corporate tax issues. Uh, you have to apply use of the land. The use of the land, it's almost all a junkyard, except for where there's five trucks. Right, but when he acquired the property, he acquired these auto salvage, correct, Mr. Barrington? Right. Okay. So, and that was the business he acquired, or was it just a trade name when he acquired it? He acquired all the assets and the trade name. Okay. All the cars. So since then, because an LLC, that's the actual company. The trade name is under Cast Stone. Am, am I incorrect in stating that? Do you own the trade name or is it Cast Stone? I own it. It's, you have to register your name so nobody else takes it. So you have to go to the Secretary of State. Uh, you know, Protects yeah. the name. But, yeah. you know, your duty is to look at the uses of the land. You know, look at the size of the impact upon the land by five protests. But so we're also trying to determine if it's two separate companies. It's not. It's one company as you're using that term. Okay. And the company is Cast Towing LLC. That's the name of it. Okay. Also doing businesses days out of salvage. Okay. Yes, I do have one question for Mr. Clark and Mr. Um, Mr. Barrington. And I, um, it seems to me that a common theme in the Abutter testimony was um, that that the the use that Mr. Uh, Casanelli is making of the parcel today is quite a bit different, substantially different. Um, than, than the use that Mr. Day made. Um, it, and if the board finds that testimony credible, is there any reason we can't consider it? Oh, that's clearly within number three on page three of my presentation. I have a Supreme Court. I have the grandfathered use and expansion. <coughs> it's material expansion. Oh, it's, okay. All right. Uh, uh, but, the, but again, Sorry, it's the impact upon the land. It's not what he does all around town. Okay. And then Mr. Day had way more cars than I do now. He used to stack them four or five high, and he would wait until the price of metal went up, and then he would cash them all in. So he had like three times. I'm not allowed to stack cars. And then he had like thousands of tires just thrown into the woods, and I'd pull them out of the wetlands. And then I had to get rid of them all. I had to clean up. That's why he was sold the places, because he was getting in trouble with uh, the tires and the wetlands and the pollution. And he's the guy who dumped all that dirt there that Mr. Ivey claimed that I put into the wetlands. But it was Ed Day that had all. When the, um, the town built that new bridge by the fire station in town, that's where they were dumping all the dirt, was in front of uh, Day's auto cell. But you're so, the one that had it bulldozed into the into the wetland. Absolutely, you did after the junkyard hearings. Hundred percent certain. Yeah, it was one of the guys from town that um, that had the bulldozer and, and he cleaned up the front of it. So there's a dispute of fact. And then, as far as all the police, the police calls that uh, you said the chief had the first four or five police calls were from uh, Mr. Hartwell. And he sucker punched my son in the face and then called the police and he got arrested, Mr. Arkwell did, and then ever since then he's had a vendetta against us. I think we'll bring the public hearing to a close uh, and we'll be in deliberation on the appeal um, and um, uh, the request that we um, there, there can be a motion to affirm, to, to deny, or to modify Mr. Clark's, uh, uh, Mr. Clark's cease and desist letter. And we are in deliberations. And one of the joys, one of the things that they didn't tell us before they let us be on the ZBA was that we have to deliberate in public. So here we go. Sonny? I'd like to offer a change. I clearly see these are two subjects. As far as the junkyard, leave that sit, let their license get taken care of, and most of these issues, because I live in that same area, and I know exactly what they're talking about with the water test. You probably got one too? Okay. Yeah. Let that stay at that issue, 
this issue is about cash towing. Cash towing, in my opinion, is a separate total entity than Dave's Junkyard. I think that they should go to the planning board and get site plan review, but I think the town should be lenient because he's been operating it for a while. I'm not saying give him a free reign, but modify your cease and desist, desist order so that it's not a, you know, an immediate impact. I mean, fair is fair. Then, when the selectmen are ready to hold their, a public meeting on the licensing, all you folks <coughs> and myself can come in and we can speak our piece as far as water is concerned. That's how I feel. That makes sense? We'll hear from the other members of the panel. <laughs> other comments or? I don't think, I don't think we're talking about water concerns right now. Right. I think we're talking about a business that started as a junkyard that was given permission to operate from 8 to 5, Monday through Saturday, that has now morphed into a huge towing business, according to the neighbors. And if I were living next door, I would not be happy with that either. Um, if you want to tow the vehicles between 8 and 5, that's one thing. But if you're towing them after hours, and in your testimony you said that you had one driver that took a truck home at night, you called him at his residence, and he took off from there. That's contrary to the testimony that we heard from the people here, that you have people there, four or five trucks leaving that your facility facility all hours of the night. So I don't, I mean, I, we can address the water issue at another time, but I, I don't think that we need to make any, you know, to vote on that at all right now. Okay. And um, just so that the rest of the panel can understand, is your recommendation that we um, affirm, yes. reverse, or modify uh, Mr. Clark's affirm order? Affirm Mr. Clark's order. I would agree. With, um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Deanna. Um, Sonny, I respectfully um, don't agree with your opinion. Um, I, I do believe that it is a substantially expanded use from just the junkyard. Um, so you do agree with me. <laughs> Um, I, I I would affirm uh, Mr. Clark's letter, cease and desist letter. Um, I I do think that is it, it it has yeah it, it has expanded substantially. Um, so that's my decision. Mr. Uh, I'm a little bit so how I perceive the, uh, the sort of um, course of tonight is the. Maybe I'm mistaken about it. Is we're first going to make a decision as to the appeal of an administrative decision on the sole issue of whether or not uh, cast towing is a permis permitted use. Then, if that the administrative uh, official's decision is upheld, <coughs> we would uh, then it's, I'm a little bit confused as to whether we, would, Attorney Barrington, would make a, a presentation on the variance or if then we would immediately go into a deliberation on the variance issue. We have not taken testimony on the variance issue, so All right. both Mr. Clark and Mr. Barrington would have an opportunity to offer, and, and members of the public also, would have an opportunity to offer additional uh, testimony, comment, and evidence on the variance issue. All right, so having understood that, uh, and although Attorney Barrington had a fine presentation tonight, I would uh, it's my belief that uh, given the uh, chairman's uh, helpful um, uh, recitation, and, and I think this is not a challenge, that uh, the general standard is something akin to um, we do, would defer to a ju the judgment of the official uh, if the official is, make, is applying a reasonable definition to um, the use in question. And I think that, um, again, with all due respect, that the official's determination that this is not a, a truck terminal is a reasonable definition, and I would uphold uh, his decision. Okay. I think based on what I've heard so far, and um, Sonny, you're welcome to chime in, but I think what I've heard so far suggests that a motion would be offered to affirm um, the the uh, cease the, the 
to affirm the determination of Mr. Clark in the cease and desist letter um, without any modification because the next part would be the variance question about whether or not this could go to site plan review um, or I, I have a procedural, like Mr. Hinsman, I have a procedural question, but, but we would treat the question of whether it could go to the planning board as a separate issue for site plan review. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, So I would make a motion that um, the board uphold and aff or affirm the decision of um, Tom Clark, the uh, administ his administrative uh, decision in regard to cast towing. Letter. So I'm going to read it back. Um, So your motion would be that the ZBA affirm the decision of Tom Clark in his letter of December 17th uh, to cease and desist the towing use? Yes, that is much more well articulated than my wanted to suggest. Thank you. No, I've had the chance to, to benefit from everybody's um, commentary. Is there a second? I said. There's a second. And um, is there discussion on the motion to affirm Mr. Clark's letter? That's a, that's an immediate shutdown, correct? Or are we going to go into this in the next portion? Then we go into so we make a decision on this motion. If the motion passes, right. then Attorney Barrington and Tom Clark would have the ability to make an argument regarding the variance. Perfect. Okay. Um, we'll be ready for a vote. Uh, those in favor of the motion uh, to affirm the decision of Tom Clark, uh, or the town code enforcement officer, uh, make it less, uh, uh, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And I find that the motion carries. So, Mr. Barrington, um, it is quarter of nine, um, and I think we're here, and uh, we've noticed up the, the hearing on the, the variance application. So we can move into um, a hearing on the request for a variance. And I have a procedural question first. Is there any reason where, where you have agreed that site plan review is applicable? Is, is action of this board required for you to go and seek site plan approval for the towing use? You have to have the use allowed by use before you go to the planning board. It's universally understood that one becomes for the other. And your last ruling ignores the fact there's always been a tow truck there, and now you're saying 100% of tow truck operations have to cease. And the uncontroverted evidence is there's always at least one tow truck there. And that's an arbitrary and capricious decision. Okay. Um, so you, you're, I'm trying to understand your request. You want to go into a hearing on variance? Okay. Then let's do that. Um, of course, I think we can all agree that all testimony needlessly submitted is incorporated by reference into this proceeding. So, the variance requested is to allow the dispatch and storage of towing vehicles to the extent that it's not a trucking terminal. And that's it. Um, it's a very slight variance. Finally, <coughs> granting the variance is not contrary to public interest because under the existing table of uses, this use is already allows frequent traffic of trucks. You have to look upon the impact upon the property. It's already an industrial zone, so we're not talking about home occupations. Um, we've allowed trucking terminals, and the board has ruled that freight is freight and car is car, but it's still what would be allowed, the public interest, is what the zoning ordinance talked about, and having five tow trucks parked and coming and going is no different from any other truck traffic. 
to any other industrial use. Any factory, any large truck tow repair, any manufacturing. There's not any more truck traffic than would be at any of those uses in this industrial zone. Um, it's not against the public interest because the public interest has made this an industrial zone from day one. If people moved in and have a house next door, like Mr. argue, then he came in knowing that he was buying a house in an industrial district. And maybe someday he'd like to sell his house and the house is next door and they'll turn it into manufacturing. Um, this is where Rollins would put their industrial zone. Two, the variance would be granted the spirit of the ordinance would be observed. So the first <coughs> public interest is to allow trucks and trucking for further industrial use. The spirit of the ordinance is exhorted for similar reasons that the spirit of the ordinance is to allow trucking and industrial use. It would allow a trucking terminal. So imagine an Amazon substation or a Walmart substation with trucks coming in day and night, bringing in freight, taking out freight. Is that use any different than five tow trucks that are there instead of one tow truck that is there. Um, the spirit of the ordinance was to make an industrial zone that would have trucking. Granting the variance would do substantial justice. Substantial justice is defined as a fundamental fairness. Um, today's junkyard is operated with at least one tow truck, integral and part of that use since the 1950s. We sold it to Mr. O'Day. He was told by the selectman that he could continue doing his towing operation. The towing operation has been in continuous use. And although he has five <coughs> trucks, he says that he has three drivers at a time. So we're only talking about three trucks moving at a time. And for the most part, 99% of what they do is done off site. So substantial justice would be follow Selectman Dion's and Jensen's and apparently Tom Clark's opinion that having some tow trucks at a junkyard um, is not against substantial justice. It's just, it's fair. For the variance be granted, it would not surround the value of the surrounding properties because the surrounding properties are all in an industrial district. Um, the abutter is a large truck repair, so he has big trucks coming in and out on a regular basis. Um, his trucks and the trailers are even bigger than the tow trucks. Um, the whether it's one tow truck or three tow trucks coming in and out or being parked there does not diminish the surrounding values. You heard that he has 50, there's been up to 100 cars parked there. So when you look at five tow trucks being parked next to 100 junk cars being parked, that's an insignificant <coughs> percentage. Um, an unnecessary hardship on a little I. No fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purpose of the ordinance and the specific application of that provision. There's no substantial relationship for the purpose of allowing an industrial district, trucking terminals, manufacturing terminals, manufacturing businesses, all to have things coming in and out all the time. And yet somehow a tow truck, because it's towing a car as its freight instead of other freight, isn't allowed. Um, clearly, I was allowing five tow trucks to operate in an industrial zone. When industry is typically associated with trucking, there's no substantial relationship between the purpose of not including a trucking terminal for tow trucks and a trucking terminal for freight. And this is your ordinance. When, when he bought this property, he had the right to rely upon your ordinance. He went into an industrial district. He went into an area that allowed trucking terminals. He asked the select and he got permission. He parked the trucks next to the car, and the blind man would have to see and feel and know that tow trucks have been there. Number five, 
Normal two, the proposed use is reasonable because five tow trucks in comparison to any other industrial use is insignificant. You have to compare it to what you allow in the district and why can't you allow this too. Um, number B, I'm not, I don't, this is a case where the D doesn't really apply. We're just going under A. Thank you, Mr. Barrington. Questions for Mr. Barrington? Mr. Barrington, is this the, in, in, the in, your, in our consideration of your variance, request for a variance, is the, this, is the issue of the incidental use part of, the, your, part of this decision tonight? Uh, on this particular request? Or is that, in other words, is this... Incidental use has no bearing upon that. Okay, so variance. in other words, so... Um, this is the last decision we're making tonight in regard to your client. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I'm just looking for clarification. So the variance request states that you are requesting a variance from Section 5.2 of the Zoning Ordinance. Non-conforming use, correct? Yes. Okay. And the table of use is 6.2, which is supposed to be a point instead of a dash. Okay. Um, and just to confirm, um, Ms. O'Neill testified that she, her property was, I'm thinking in relationship to Mr. Day's property, it's closer to the river than um, than it is to the um, to the to the road that I think is is Crockett's Crossing Road. Um, is that also in the industrial zone, Mr. Barrington? Um, I don't think the industrial. I don't think the industrial zone goes back that far. Uh, incorporates this property, but I don't think it goes sure, yeah. back into what we call scout land. Right? Okay. Um, and one of the questions and. Um, the other question I had is, if the variance is approved, then it would go to site plan review. Um, and so questions of where the trucks would be stored and um, putting pans under cars and so forth, that would, that would be taken up in that process, correct? We are not disputing the part of the code enforcement's decision that the towing is a use that hasn't gone through site plan. So uh, once it approved, it goes to site plan. Are there other questions? Mr. Clark? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I really have no objection to the request for the variance. That was, I believe, the whole purpose, um, to have it established as a separate use and to proceed through the proper land use um, procedure and to have it, A, approved by the zoning board and then go on to site review so that the conditions of the site can be imposed <coughs> by the planning board. So I, I have no objection to the application. Okay. Um, I have a question. I just want to make sure that Mr. Yes. Clark has had a chance to finish. Yes, I have. Thank you. I just want a clarification. If we allow this variance tonight from both of us, will that mean that Mr. Day's or the Day's salvage <coughs> part would go back to the way it was and his initial request for that uh, permit, or are we extending it so that he can continue past towing as he is operating now? Right now, the decision, if you should you um, grant the appeal, you are stating that the towing operation is an allowed use, but would have to go to the planning board for site review. Um, according to the state Supreme Court, that's totally one of your concerns. Um, <coughs> If we issue a cease and desist and the applicant or owner appeals a decision, the cease and desist is stayed until such time as the final decision is made. So with you folks deciding and then with the delay between the zoning board and the planning board, Mr. Castelli could still operate both businesses as he has been. Once it gets to the planning board, then they establish a site review approval and can impose <coughs> any reasonable conditions that they deem fit. But he will be able to continue to operate in the meantime.
other questions for Mr. Clark? And I should have, uh, I'll, I'll give Mr. Barrington a chance to respond. Um, it, as I reviewed um, Mr. Barrington's submissions uh, and thought about the um, aquifer protection district overlay, um, most of the town seems to be subject to that. Um, but as I listen to Mr. Barrington tonight, it sounds as if the, the concerns about the overlay district really relate to the salvage yard and not to the towing part, because as long as the towing part is adequately regulated in site plan review, then the impacts on the aquifer district should be minimized. Does that sound like it's an accurate? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, it does. I agree. And that diesel doesn't have a VTE. Yeah, it's, I think it's more the, the cars coming in and out that are stored on the land that, um, uh, that's judging. Part of your yeah, I think that's part of the, although you're, you're increasing the density, although are Mr. Casanelli's testimony was that the density is actually lower than it was with Mr. Day, so. It is, much yeah. less cars. Okay. Um, and he's. Impound, impound cars are functional. So I've been at a number of stoplights with with interesting stuff on the on the road pavement. But, all right. Any other questions for Mr. Clark? Just a clarification, question, sure. please, Mr. Chairman. Me again, Tom. <laughs> all right. So if this if this appeal is granted and it goes to the you mean, planning board, you go very. You say yeah. the very. I'm sorry, variance. Variance. Thank you for the correction, there, Mr. Chairman. Um, at that point is when they could put in all the stipulations, correct? Um, they could put in the stipulations as it relates to the site plan review for cast towing. Right. So in other words, it could be a limitation on, we'll say, noise level after certain hours or limits of operation or amount of vehicles. Yes. Um, all of that would come then. The planning, yes. Yes. Thank you. Cool. I have one question, Mr. Chairman. So yes. my understanding is that the Days auto salvage, the, the, the salvage yard permit is still in the mill. It has not been continued. That's correct. That, subject to the rest of this, will be the next step that Mr. Cal Cassinello will go to the select board to have that reviewed and approved or modified. Or modified. So that also is um, still required. Okay, perfect. Thank you. One, one last procedural question, Tom, Ms. Clark. So, if we approve the variance uh, pending the site plan review by the planning board, what is the status of, of how task, cast towing can be operated in the meantime? Um, he can continue to operate as he has been. All right. Members of the public, thank you for hanging in through a long hearing. Uh, it's an opportunity for public uh, input and comment on the request for a variance. So they, um, Mr. Casanelli has asked the planning board to approve, um, a, a, approve a request to find that it would be permitted under our zoning ordinance for him to have a towing business subject to the um, uh, activities of the planning board. Um, to, to administer what we call site plan re review, which takes up the details of, of how a business use is undertaken. Um, so any additional testimony that members of the public would like to offer or any comment is, is um, um, well, Mr. Castle, if yes. you would restate well, your name. Castle from uh, Heritage Drive. And, okay, I feel that the tolling business, business is, is connected to the... Uh, salvage yard because the towing business will be le legally expanded from one to five trucks with a full-time mechanic to service uh, the, the trucks on site. The expansion of the tow truck business will na naturally expand with the salvage business and uh, th therefore uh, both businesses will, will expand land uses that handle hazardous materials and pose a huge risk to the 
uh, p public safety by uh, possibly uh, contaminating the uh, water quality of the Warren Brook and the Fresh Creek watershed. Um, that's you know you know that's a that's a major concern that, that I have, and there's some upsetting things that concern me, and uh, I don't. I don't think it's acceptable to put hands beneath leaking vehicles, which is stored on a uh, gravel uh, parking lots next next to wetlands and a watershed to to contain hazardous waste. Uh, you know, um, and I have a copy of the. Uh, <clears throat> Requirements for for the junkyard and the same same should should apply to the uh, uh, towing business. Um, excuse me, I, I did have an infirmary. I think it's on a back page. Bear, uh, bear with me. This is the Motor Vehicle Junkyard License on 2003. Well, the first thing it says in 2003 is tires should be stored in appropriate, you know, you know, containers and under cover, and 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 the owner has done that, and I, you know, commend him. But on number 12, it says. All fluids shall be immediately removed from junk vehicles and shall be stored on site in appropriate con uh, containers which are in compliance with best management practices for uh, uh, auto salvage yards. I don't think that when you pick up a vehicle and it's pouring outside and you put it on a gravel parking lot and you have a pan and you just you know leave you know leave it there overnight that that's a Best management practice. I think that if the EPA s saw this, they would they would be uh, really upset. And and the consequences is to the neighborhood. We will get contaminated water at some point in time. It could be next year. It could be in ten years. Uh, you can't see contaminated water, and it's very difficult and expensive to. To test for all the contaminants. Mr. Argue? I would uh, <coughs> concur with that observation. It's um, the when a vehicle's been involved. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but if I could get you to restate your yep. name, even though I recognize yep. my name, so that so that Sarah can get a good. I'm name. sorry, my memory is not. <laughs> That's right, Jim Argue uh, from 144 Somerset Road. Thank you. The, Vehicles that are involved in accidents and brought into the tow yard are left out in the tow yard. And um, that's not a good management practice to leave. You know, if you got in a head-on collision, your car's leaking. Um, and it doesn't belong in a muddy lot. Anything else? I just I think that needs to be part of if you pass this variance there needs to be some stipulations on, on how they are controlling um, <coughs> runoff from the vehicles. Thank you. Okay. Comment or testimony? David Arkwell, 190 Summersworth Road. I guess uh, I'm questioning um, the acreage of the lot is, uh, as I recall, it's somewhere around seven acres. And there's a good portion of that that's already in wetlands. Um, if you're saying that the towing business isn't part of the junkyard business, then shouldn't that lot have to? Shouldn't it be a? Shouldn't it be a conforming lot to put a trucking drummer or whatever you care to call it on that? And and doesn't one bit does? Can you have a junkyard and a? a truck terminal and can you have three different businesses on one non-conforming lot? Um, 
part of me wants to, I, I think in order to keep our hearing on track, Mr. Arkwell, I'll be glad to talk with you afterwards about how, how, I, how I understand and remember the site plan review working. Um, in order to keep the proceeding orderly, I probably shouldn't answer your question from here, um, but I do appreciate your question, and I'm sure Mr. Clark or Mr. Hinsman or I would be glad to, to talk, talk with you about it. Thank you. And you, what, did, I, did I cut you off? No, no, that was it. Other questions or comments? Mr. Argue, I believe that was his name, um, indicated that we should put conditions on the variance. Is that allowable? Uh, not really, no. This, okay. The site plan review process really okay. is the it is the check. It's it's where the town gets to address some of the concerns okay. that have been um, uh, made tonight, particularly by Abutters, but also by Mr. Clark about the scope of the use and the um, um, way in which the, the the use is operated on that site. I'm just concerned because I we're going back to like the junkyard operation or the salvage yard operation, and that clearly stated what the permit was. It was eight to five. Monday through Saturday. And if we give this variance, then we're saying that what he has been doing now was in contrary, in contrary to the permit that he got originally. We're approving him to continue business as usual and not. True, for now. However, it's my opinion that the planning board could certainly expand the condition of the salvage operation to the towing operation. So it shall choose. Mr. Barrington, did you also want to address Ms. Bravo's question? Uh, I agree that, that this is a this is to just say in theory that the dispatch and storage of a towing vehicle is granted a variance because it causes substantial injustice to allow all these other uses that are more intense than that. So once you have a use established, the planning board establishes the seating, the hours of operation, all the things that affect the public. And, and they will, believe me. That's, they, they do good work. All right. Um, other questions from the board? And Ms. Cass? Um, I have just a couple. So are we certain that the planning board can establish conditions as far as hours of operation? Yes. I would say yes. Absolutely. We are sure. Okay. So, um, Mr. Barrington and then Mr. Clark, any final comments that you want to make? No. No? I'm all set. Thank you, sir. All right. Then um, I will close the public hearing, and we will be in uh, deliberations on the, um, uh, on the request for a variance from sections 5.2 and 6.2 of the table of uses. Mr. Chairman, is it, could you keep that up for a second? Sure. Is it your preference that we um, deliberate on the individual elements individually or as a whole? Um, as a whole, um, my preference, we won't take a vote on each and every element, but I do want the board to consider all five elements very carefully. Um, the reason that we won't vote element by element is that it's, it can lead to an erroneous result, in my view, if, um, uh, if some of us agree that one, one element is met and some of us don't agree that that element is met, um, we, we really need to treat it as a whole. Um, but we do need to deliberate in our, our, both our findings and our decision have to address all five elements. I'll go ahead and speak first. If it, so, if, in my overall analysis here, um, you know, it seems to me that, um, in terms of weighing some of the, these factors, that um, you know the argument is along the way that that, that cast towing is. And I know this isn't properly the issue before the board. 
incidental to today's model sandwich. I really think that the principal business has become cast towing, and Days Auto Salvage has become a vestige of it. It sort of reminds me of, I wrote down some examples here, Amazon starting off selling books, and really now is an online marketplace, and a streaming service that really has nothing to do with books. Verizon used to have landlines, and now it's become wireless. Um, according to the applicant, you know, Days used to have far more cars, stacked cars, and only one tow truck, and now it's five tow trucks in, in, in much less cars. And I, and I say that because to me, that weighs on um, the elements of the hardship and, and uh, the values of the surrounding properties. I think um, that if the variance was, gr was granted, uh, the value of the surrounding uh, properties would be diminished um, because um, of the uh, amount of traffic in and out, regardless of whether or not we, I don't think we can consider, we can, I don't think in making this decision we can speculate as to what the planning board will do. And so, knowing that that's an unknown, I, I don't feel that it meets um, element four. And in terms of um, the unnecessary hardship, with all due respect to the applicant, I think he is push the envelope so far in terms of what the business was and, and what it really is now that uh, I'm not sure that he can claim unnecessary hardship. So I'm inclined to vote against granting a variance. Other comments from the board? Mr. Boss? Yeah. My comment would be, I agree with John. I think that... Um, you think great points, and I would, would be in favor of not voting for variance. I don't have any comments or concerns. Okay. I'll take a turn. Um, I guess I, I do tend to be persuaded um, by the argument that this is an industrial zone um, and that there are many uses permitted in the industrial zone, um, and relatively few uses that are pro prohibited in the in the um, industrial zone. Um, as far as the spirit of the ordinance, um, it seems to me that the that the uh, request for the variance is consistent with the spirit, in in the sense that so uh, granting Mr. Hinsman's point that yeah the business has evolved. But as I understand the underlying moving force of the, of the New Hampshire zoning laws, it's to allow the landowner, things change. It, this isn't the world that Mr. Day existed in in 1950 when he started, um, started the salvage lot. And, and the spirit of the ordinance is supposed to keep up in a way that allows Mr. Casanelli um, to use the land in accordance with what other landowners in the district could do. So I, I think I find that the second element is met. Um, I, I am troubled on, uh, I'm troubled by the estoppel argument. Um, I confess to some occupational bias. I'm a former prosecutor, um, but I, I, I'm bordering on offended by the idea that if uh, somebody just gets away with violating the ordinance long enough um, that the town can take no action on it. Um, on the other hand, um, it seems to do substantial justice because the concerns about of abutters and the concerns of landowners in terms of impacts on water, noise, um, hours of operation, the, the zoning ordinance is set up to manage that. And we have a good planning board that can uh, work through site plan review with, with this landowner. Um, and so from that standpoint, it seems like the sub substantial justice that occurs is that we get a non-conforming and increasingly non-conforming use back onto the tracks and um, bring it into the scope of the ordinance. So I, I think I would find on three that it is, um, uh, that it is met. On the values of surrounding properties, um, Again, I, I, am, uh, I credit the um, 
applicants' argument that in some respects there are now fewer cars and the number of trucks isn't, um, isn't specifically the, uh, isn't the same kind of harm that we were concerned about with expand, incre you know, increasing expansion of a, of a salvage yard. Um, I, I am, however, um, mindful. I think that the abutter testimony um, about impacts on surface water, um, uh, it, it really, it, it's a close one because if surf, if if people's wells or if surface water is contaminated, um, and um, I think what none of there was really no testimony, and none of us are the kind of scientists that can make the connection. We don't know that that any of the impacts on um, aquifers are um, uh, you know, a, res a result of Mr. Casanelli's operation. It could be something miles and miles away. So, um, although I'm concerned about the values of surrounding property, I, I think on balance, I would find that um, the applicant has met, um, met his burden. Uh, and the burden is on Mr. Casanelli on all five, on all, on all five elements, as I understand it. Um, hardship is where I, I struggle a little bit because it does just doesn't feel like a variance to me. It feels almost like a advisory opinion about what's included um, or not in the zoning ordinance. But I think in this instance, I would find that it does meet the test for unnecessary hardship because what's unique about this property is that it was it's an existing non-conforming use, and it's been there so long. And it's been, this is not to throw, this, I don't, I don't, I, I know Mr. Jansen and Mr. Dion, I respect the heck out of them. Um, and I respect Mr. Clark. Um, and you've heard what I think about the argument on, on estoppel. But it's not Mr. Casanelli's fault that the world has changed. And it's not his fault that the technologies have changed and the requirements for earning his living have changed. He happens to own a parcel that, um, he went into that parcel and is doing that business because it was there as a permitted non-conforming use, uh, and it has evolved. And it does seem to me that it would be an unnecessary hardship to that, not, not so much to Mr. Casanelli, but to that land um, to say, okay, we can't bring it. The only thing that can happen there is this non-conforming salvage yard, and we can't bring it within the scope of the ordinance. Uh, so I guess I would, on balance, um, I would vote in favor of granting the, the petition, and I believe it's justifiable on, on all five elements. Uh, and that's, you know, I, um, one thing I will say, we can discuss if the board chooses to reject the petition, I'm happy to draft the order for the board, um, but I'm also happy to defer to Mr. Hinsman if, because he also can draft orders for the boards. But um, I'll do my I'll do my job as chair if you want me to. But that's where I would land first. No, that's fine. I would like to have some discussion regarding the non-conforming use. So this is what I'm struggling with, and you know I think we've determined so it is a non-conforming use that has existed for a number of years. But this, the ordinance is very clear that the non-conforming use may continue indefinitely but no such lawfully non-conforming use shall be extended or enlarged in any manner. And, I mean, that's... The... <coughs> I can't give legal advice to the board. I did, I did read a number of the cases and the guidance from the Office of State. It's no longer the Office of State Planning, it's OSI, I forget what that stands for. Right. Um, and our Supreme Court um, has granted um, quite a number of exp it's, it's, expansions. Yeah, it's okay. it's substantial change right. um, to the use. And I was uh, on the I disagree with Mr. Barrington about the um, uh, the board's previous action being um, arbitrary and capricious because I think it was highly reasonable right. that that this particular use had evolved so much that it was substantially different, and right. therefore I f I was comfortable. Finding that, that, that Mr. Clark's order was the was the correct it's order. It's almost flipped. Yeah, but um, no, and and um, no, expansion of non-conforming use to, isn't directly relevant to the question of whether or not we grant the variance, at least as I understand it. And yeah, yeah. I, my my issue that I have is 
I believe it was he's had it for 17 years, and for 17 years or whatever the time frame was, he's applied to the town for a permit for his salvage yard. And in that permit, when it's granted by the town, it has specific um, criteria in there. You operate between 8 and 5, Monday through Saturday. He knew that when he was growing his towing business, that he was going beyond that scope. So over the years, when he was adding these additional trucks and doing additional work and going with AAA and all of that, he had the opportunity to come to the town and apply for a permit to do that business. I have a problem now with sitting here today, 17 years later, giving him a break on this when he was not proactive himself in gaining that, that putting that request forward to the town. Sorry. No. <laughs> no. Why were Mr. Boss? Yeah. I'm going to put a little right on to what you said, uh, Mr. Chairman. Trucking terminal is allowed in that zone. Any judge is going to rule, overrule us that where it states right there, it is allowed. I mean, it's in the book. Now the question is, what's the definition of a trucking terminal? Now, I'm not prepared to battle that one. I don't think you are, Tom. It, it's probably going to fall under some real vague definition. I think this is our opportunity to grab this bull by the horns and put our controls on it. If he goes before the planning board and they do diligent there, a lot of these issues are going to disappear. I mean, your storage of, of impounded vehicles is on a gravel lot. I mean, they could go and say, you know, we're going to require a concrete pad to contain any fluids. And when you put it on asphalt, gasoline's going to go right through asphalt. And that's just one thing. I mean, as far as the water, that's strictly junkyard license issue. However, if you've got a store-bought vehicle, I couldn't agree more, it is definitely leaking coolant. Uh, unless you've got a rear engine, and most of the radios are still in the front. Um, the trucks, they may be leaking a little. Actually, according to the requirements of the state motor vehicle inspection, if a vehicle is leaking, as long as it doesn't leak and the leak touches the ground, you can pass the vehicle. But if it leaks to the ground, it's a different story. So I think this is an opportunity for the town to take this whole situation and control it and put some... Everybody back there, every one of us, have all got the same issues. When I got the notice from the state, it listed North Coast Railroad, it listed Day's Junkyard, on that paperwork from the state when they come down to test my road. So, I live on Rollins Road, not that far from you folks, so. And, Deanne, I, I respect your point about, um, you know, the town hopes that all of us, when we go before a town board or a town official, will be honest and forthcoming. But the same way that I, I don't think that we should be blaming the previous town for not discovering this, I'm not sure that we need, um, the, uh, what the planning board has to consider is whether this parcel meets the requirements for the variance. Uh, it's not, it's not a, um, we can't really make a character judgment about um, Mr. Casanelli or how he chooses to deal with town officials. Um, uh, uh, and there may be two sides to the story okay. um, that, that we haven't heard and because it's not directly relevant to what we have to do as a um, land use regulatory um, uh, At least that's my initial sense of it. I, it's not to, I, I, I understand your point and I respect it because I have been in that position where um, the, the work of that people like Mr. Clark, the select board, the planning board do, really depends on our integrity and honesty as we deal with them. Um, but, you know, be that as it may, I think, as, as Sonny says, it's a new day and it's a chance for for, um, uh, for all of us to kind of hold each other account appropriately. 
Um, I know it's not required. Can I make just, just one point? You may. Thank you. Right now you have a grandfather junkyard that nobody likes. Mr. Casanelli is also operating a towing business. But he's not allowed to have a towing business there, according to you, because it's not the same as a truck junkyard. By granting him a variance to say that a towing operation within the industrial use is permitted, and then go to the planning board, then the planning board will be in a position to shrink or eliminate the junkyard because you're giving him an economic viability. Right now he has two businesses, junk and towing. And your zoning ordinance allows industrial, but apparently not tow trucks, according to your rule. I'd like to have a legal lease. All right. I sense a, a split in the board. Um, one of the ways uh, it, we can go around again to see if any of our positions have changed, um, um, or we can go forward with a motion to grant or deny and take a vote. I, I, what's the board's pleasure? Can I deliver a little more, Charlie? And, 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 I, uh, we can deliberate. Well, no, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to go much further on this. So, I'm swayed to the edge with your with your comments, Mr. Chairman, on this thing. It's the, I guess what, what essentially bothers me is that the applicant bought Days Auto Salvage, not Days Towing Service. And it seems it's akin to buying a, a little corner grocery store and it becomes a wholesale vegetable distribution um, issue. And, and uh, you know, if we deny the variance, he can still operate the um, the junkyard. And it seems to me, under the previous incarnation of the junkyard, he could have a tow truck, maybe two, um, but he'd have to operate during the business hours. I. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely on the fence on this one, and uh, but I, I appreciate your, your comments, so I, I remain undecided, and then may actually end up deciding as we, as we vote. Um, but I guess I, I, to, to get to your you, comments, so if, you if you I could. A, can you name a, a, one of the five prongs that that's Sure, so, so I'm going to come back to the... Um, Ms. Katz's point about a non-conforming use and expanding a non-conforming use in terms of various. This seems to be a wholesale expansion of a, of a non-conforming use. We are basically saying you can take one business that's non-conforming and completely transfer it into a completely another business and seek a variance. And tell me that I'm wrong on that. I mean, to, well, to, I think on the zone, on the variance analysis, you're wrong, okay. uh, Mr. Hensman, because so um, Mr. Casanelli decides to retire and move to Florida, and he sells the property to somebody who wants to um, close the, the salvage yard, close the towing business, and open a greenhouse. Um, they can do it. Like there's no the, there's no legal obligation to, on Mr. on the owner of the parcel to maintain a non-conforming use, and as I understand the the public interest prong, um, the public interest is to try to as much as we can direct the uses of the land, you know, kind of give them a nudge in the direction of greater compliance with the with the ordinance, and so yes, the 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 business has evolved. My understanding, and again, I'm not offering legal advice here, but um, my understanding of the cases was that that kind of evolution I is allowed um, and isn't is. Again, it's I don't want to mix and match expansion of non-conforming uses and variances, but it seems to me that that's why public interest, spirit, and substantial justice come down on the side of the Thank you, yeah. Mr. Mr. Clark. If I may, um, I think. If the board grants the variance, you're not permitting the expansion of non-conforming use. You're creating the operation of a conforming use by stating that the towing service is a conforming use in that zone. So it's not, in my opinion anyway, an expansion of the non-conforming use. It's, you're establishing a whole new conforming use. All right. Thank you. 
So I guess my question for other members of the board, are, are, we, are, are we accepting that this de is defined as a truck terminal, that it would fall within that scope? We've already decided, I think, no on that. We are now deciding whether or not to allow to grant a variance for this particular use. Am I wrong, Chairman? We haven't worded a motion yet, but I think it's it's to grant a variance from the provisions of 5.2 and 6.2. But 5.2 is non-conforming use. Okay. Okay. Um, so to <laughs> to grant a variance from the um, express language of the table of uses to permit the establishment of a towing um, a, a towing business in the industrial zone. Okay. And Mr. Barrington is reporting that this towing business is defined under truck terminal. No, no I don't think so now. Because okay. if, if it was, then we, he wouldn't have to go for a variance. Right, it would be. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Boss. Hi. In your comment, if we knock him down the two, right, with no controls, if we say yes to this, we should have the ability to put all the controls we feel would be necessary for environmental protection and whatnot. And that would be the golden time for the neighbors to say, hey. Yes, okay. All right. You agree with me? I do, actually. Oh, wow. Sweet That's one for me. Give the trolley some credit back to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Again, I don't. I want to give this as much time as the, the board needs to, to deliberate. Um, this is. I mean, all of the decisions we make are important. This one is is important. I'm not convinced that a variance is this should be granted. Okay. Make a motion for a vote. We can make a motion um, and and see uh, if, if the motion. Um, I, let me let me try a motion. We make a non vote. Just. No. I don't make a motion. Oh. Okay. I make a motion to not grant a variance. Okay. Uh, a motion by um, Ms. Rollo to deny the variance. Um, and um, is there a second? I stand alone. <laughs> okay. So uh, there is no second for that. So let's have a try a motion to uh, grant the variance. I'll make a motion. And I will uh, reluctantly uh, second it, having been persuaded by my fellow board members that it's the appropriate thing to do. There discussion on that motion. Are we ready for a vote? Those in favor of uh, granting the requested variance to permit the establishment of a um, towing business in the industrial zone um, uh, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Okay. Uh, and I find that the motion carries four to one. Um, it remains on us to, provide, to come up with written decisions uh, for both <coughs> motions or for both applications, uh, and I'll try to get drafts. So I'll take on the, the drafting uh, obligation. Try to drafts for you before the. So we under a time frame that we have to get those done. Seven days. Seven days. So by Sunday night. That's tough. Yeah, it tough with a day job too. And we will also be, be going to site time. Yeah. Yeah. This will be going to site time, and there will be another opportunity for public input before the plan. Is I do. Is there any business, other further business to come before the planning board? At the voting board, excuse me. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. So we have a motion to adjourn. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. Thank you all very much. Thank you, members.